Okay, it's been a while since we've had anything in the lab. Not, not that I haven't been working on things. Uh, but today, I've got a uh, repeater here that uh, a friend of mine brought by. And uh, it's got a case of the almost works. Um, so basically, this uh, is reported to actually work. It just does not give the amount of uh, output or receive sensitivity that uh, another unit identical to this puts out. So we're going to do some quick checks uh, to see if we can find out what's going wrong. Basically you have uh, the equivalent of a transmitter and receiver and uh, there's a, a duplexer here on the side, uh, one of the mobiles. Really I'm going to set up two things. One is uh, I'm going to set the uh, service monitor up to do, tune this duplexer if needed. Um, and I'm also going to set up just a dummy load. I'm going to pull this duplexer out real quick. Okay, basically what we've done here is we've just hooked up to the transmitter. Um, probably can't see it very well, but I've got this set up uh, for wattage output to test. Um, so basically we're just going to turn the repeater on. I'm going to key up the power, see what kind of wattage we get, and then we're going to check the uh, spectrum analyzer to see if we're on carrier and everything looks good. Okay, we're pushing about 38.4 watts. And the carrier is at 444.250. So the output of the radio uh, actually looks good. Uh, now we'll need to check the receive sensitivity of the receiver, um, which will be a little difficult to do uh, because it's in repeater configuration. Um, and then we want to check this duplexer. Um, I had tuned this before. And there's a possibility a lot of times when you get these and they get jiggled around or banged around, they'll change a little bit. Um, we're just going to check the characteristics of this real quick uh, to make sure we're still on frequency. Okay, so where we're at now, we put the duplexer back in. Really, the duplexer was still pretty much spot on. Um, I think on the transmit side, I, I gained maybe a dB at most. Um, and that was just really fine tuning. So I'm suspecting, it looks like we have plenty of transmit, transmit power. I'm actually suspecting that it's going to be a cable. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of testing uh, to see if we can notice any anomalies. Um, this particular jack, it has a lot of wear on the center pin jack. Uh, those are spring loaded. Um, and I'm going to try to just usually you need to replace these if they're bad but what I'm going to do is put a little bit of deox in there and try to get that cleaned up uh, and just gently put the cable in uh, as best I can uh, to try to get a good connection okay since we know uh, person that brought this to me since they were pretty sure that this was bad um, they got better results leaving this out of loop I'm going to do my first test uh, directly attached to the duplexer. Okay, not too bad. Um, connected directly to the duplexer. We're putting out about uh, about 30 watts. Which is not a bad loss for one of these notch duplexers. And now I'm going to add this pigtail cable in. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, we're lo we losing everything. Um, it's transmitting out less than a watt. Okay, it looks like the problem is actually um, up here. This this doesn't made up very well thread wise, but at the duplexer, um, it's just not connecting very well. It's going from nothing to something. All right there, we've got nothing. Press on this connector just a little bit. 
then we bump up to you know 2730 uh, so that's good definitely gonna be the problem and it's a bulkhead connector um, it looks like a male uh, microwave connector to a female microwave connector anyway Service monitors are really good about figuring out issues. Um, basically, this is taking about 20, 25 minutes uh, to debug the issue. I'm fairly confident um, that this is working well. I am going to go back and do the receive. It actually may be end up being the duplexer connections themselves. They don't look great. They don't. They're not a gold-plated uh, in interconnector, but I've, I've deoxed them and at least got it semi-working breaking right at uh, 113 which is a pretty pretty decent receiver okay this is uh pretty much the end of the video troubleshooting wise I'm fairly certain that this is going to be the issue and it's either going to be this connector um, either isn't making good contact with the duplex or that may be the fault of this side or the other side my cable seems to be working fine, so I would suspect uh, this may be the issue. I'm probably just going to go ahead and pull this bulkhead out for him um, and have it out so that he can uh, measure it and get another one made. And uh, hopefully that'll solve the issue. Or he may elect just to connect directly to the duplexer. Thanks for watching.